from rubbing shoulders with extremists in Yemen to surfing on an Australian beach. Sheikh Zainuddin Johnson has lived quite an extraordinary life. Now he's been appointed as an imam, similar to a parish priest, hoping he can help change perceptions of Islam and make Australia a safer place. From Rockstar... You know, we were, we were living the rock and roll lifestyle. <laughs> to the surfing imam. Yeah, stopped. <laughs> Sheikh Zainuddin Johnson is a man with an incredible past. But that was after four years of living uh, the life of a fugitive in Yemen. A TV star in Egypt. All of our graves are the same. Who was blacklisted by his own government. I did get my passport canceled. Now he's back in Australia trying to bring peace to a community divided. They're not interested in, uh, in trying to hurt you. With a hope to stop radicalisation in its tracks. I mean, hatred is a very dangerous thing. This is what Australia's newest imam used to do for a living, playing in a rock band called Grinder. He's the long-haired bass player on the right, nicknamed Zonk, who loved his footy as much as his parties. I think everyone has their idea of what it's like backstage. Yeah, it's pretty true. You know, we were the boys. I mean, we'd go surfing, um, play the music. At their peak in the late 90s, they played as a support act for Powderfinger. A lot of parties and alcohol, drugs. Well, of course, I mean, uh, you know, just like everybody else, I think. But the only singing he does now is reciting verses from the Quran. <laughs> He says it was the alcohol and drug fueled deaths of close friends that made him realise he needed a change. You know, I began to say to myself, well, you know, if you don't pull your head in, then you're going to be going on that same path and that might, that might be your end. And that affected me. He and his wife converted to Islam in the year 2000 and then a year later watched in horror as the Twin Towers came down in New York at the hands of terrorists acting in the name of his new religion. And we started reading a lot about Islam and learning. We realised that we need to know more about our religion uh, because there's something, we, there's a lot of things we don't know. He decided the only way to understand Islam was to leave Australia and learn Arabic in the Middle East. First stop, Syria. Syria was considered uh, one of the axis of evil, I think, back in those days. and. Uh, I didn't see any evil, I, I only saw just people living their lives. After six months in Syria, he moved to another volatile country, Yemen. He enrolled in Islamic studies at a university, but was listed as a security threat by the Australian government, who cancelled his passport. When the appeal came, we were supposed to see evidence, and there was no evidence. I mean, there was no evidence. WikiLeaks unearthed a confidential Australian diplomatic cable which recommended Zine Johnson be placed on a no-fly list due to his association with radical cleric Anwar Alolaki, an al-Qaeda recruiter based in Yemen who would eventually be killed by a US drone strike. The death of Alaki marks another significant milestone in the broader effort to defeat al-Qaeda. Sheikh Zainuddin says his only contact with al Olaki was one phone call about a classmate's divorce. He, he had called me and we discussed that. And that's the only dealings I had um, with Anwar al Olaki himself. Four years later, Sheikh Zainuddin says an ASIO officer arranged a meeting with him in Yemen, telling him he should reapply for his passport. I got my passport back and... Uh, you know, after, after four years, mind you, but I got my passport back. 
With his passport back, he moved to Egypt, where he starred in his own TV show, then on to Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and finally Indonesia. Now he's back in Australia and back to the beaches he missed so much. Do many Muslims surf? Not a lot of Muslims surf. Uh, it's just not something that's in the custom of, the, of their countries, but it's the custom of Australia. And even though there wasn't much surf, the sheikh was still able to catch a few waves. There's nothing under Sharia law that forbids him from surfing as long as his legs are covered past the knee. He believes Australians' fear of Sharia law is unfounded. One of the laws of Sharia law is that I have to obey the laws of the country that I live in. Do you want non-Muslims like me to live by Sharia law as well? No, of course not. Of course not. It's not, it's not for us to force people into living under Sharia law, especially in countries like this. The countries Sheikh Zainuddin Johnson visited may sound quite terrifying, but what it gives him is street credibility amongst Australian Muslims, particularly those who may be vulnerable to radicalisation. He's gone to a particular locations that have particular religious credibility. Dr Clark Jones is a de-radicalisation expert at ANU, whose research tries to identify reasons why young Australians join violent extremist groups. Teenagers like Fahad Jabbar, who gunned down Curtis Cheng outside Parramatta Police Station, or Jake Bellardi, who left school in Melbourne to die in a suicide mission with Islamic State. Dr Jones says Sheikh Zainuddin is part of the solution, not part of the problem. Certainly part of the solution. I mean, we, uh, we need all hands on deck, definitely. He may be useful in uh, de-radicalisation or intervention attempts for uh, young people that might um, get involved in radicalisations. Sheikh Zainuddin says he's used to playing a role in preventing Muslims from turning towards violent extremism. I have been doing it for the past 10 years, not for any other reason except that it's my duty. He says his deep understanding of Islamic scripture allows him to debate anyone who mistakenly believes violence can be justified. Those who are following these false ideas or these uh, distorted ideas, it is only because they're lacking the, the education and the information. I'm able to debate them using the books of Islam, not using my own uh, intellect. Sheikh Zainuddin has been appointed as Imam or leader of the Muslim community on Queensland's Sunshine Coast, where his love of surfing has already impressed locals. Yes, definitely, because it's integrating into the Australian way of life, isn't it? I think a lot of our worry, isn't it, is that we don't understand the religion. You know, and I think if you can um, bring some more understanding between two different religions and cultures, I think that's probably a good thing. Once you go to a mosque and meet a Muslim and you sit down and you talk to them, you realise that these people are just normal people living their lives, just like you and I. Sheikh Zainuddin is currently living with his mum whilst arranging his own accommodation. She's not religious, but tells us she's very proud of her son.